fly was tied by Megan Boyd, the famous Scottish lady fly tie. And we start off with a uni thread, in this case in red and 8 oh. Now this is a salar double in size 7. Now I'm going to basically start the thread right in the centre of the hook, just to give me the position for the middle hackle. Just remove the waist piece. Then I'm going to tie in a small oval silver tinsel. This is for the tag. I'm just going to wind it down and then basically stop between the point and the barb of the hook. So all the way down. This point here and then just wind down the bend of the hook with four turns. Then bring the oval tinsel between which will basically hold the tag. You can see and then we just have to bring our thread turns up and tighten it in. Just carry one up, round about. Now there's going to be a red part of the tag here and it's going to be red silk floss or marabou floss as we call it. Now I'm using the same materials that Megan would have used. Now this is a, there it's called marabou silk, peels of silk. This is the floss here. And the two colours I'm going to be using is yellow, obviously in this case red. Now, in this size of fly, you can split, just unravel the, the floss, it comes in two, separate it, keep that for your next fly. Catch it on the top, now at this point, put some wax on your thread, wind down, tying it in, come back up, and then nice and tight, form the red part of your tag to that point there. You should be round about in line with the point of the hook once you let the thread go. Trim the excess away. Now for the legs, I've got a golden pheasant crest now. I'm just going to slightly lengthen the legs, they're slightly longer than the one that's in Megan's. And uh, you tie it to suit yourself. Now this is a breast feather here, the golden pheasant. Just select a nice softish hackle, not too stiff, that one there, looks a nice. Now the first thing I do is just basically pull back the fibres to separate what I want to use and then leave some of the fluff as a, as a handle as a way to hold the feather as you wind it. And then I'm going to come in here and tie it in, re reveal the tip so I can tie it in. wind up, kind of head length, fold this back. I mean this is the top of the hackle, the front of the hackle I'm, I'm looking at. So watch your fingers when you're doing this. So wind down, come back up nice and tight and break that off. And then I'm just going to fold the fibres towards the back and then do one turn in front of the other. Just take your time Drawing them back as you go. Nice and tight. And then bring your thread up. Catch your hackle in. Just put in, I like to put a 9th degree bend in. Now, there's a couple of fibres there I don't want, so I'm just going to take them away. Now if you look here, you see that kind of 9th degree bend from the stem, or the wound part of the hackle, to the stem. And just take a thread up, tying this in. And then I just break it off because it, it's quite easy to do that. And then, watch your fingers. There's a the shape, you get that nice, leggy, open hackle shape that makes the fly swim extremely well. And then, get the oval tinsel again. Upside down, tie in the hackle, or in the, sorry, the rib. Just work your thread down. 
point there. So you get the yellow marabou salt. Now you could use whatever you want. I mean, the whatever salt you have, a rayon salt, or yeah, I like the uni, uh, the neon salts, which are the fluorescent side, which are certainly worth tying. If I was say so basically changing it slightly, I would use number four glow bright floss on the Chinese red at the back, or even a fine a, a nice dubbin, a red dubbin would work. I'm just catching in the floss and winding the thread up. Now what I'm going to do is just take the thread up a wee bit, just to make sure I'm tying onto a bed of thread at this point when I get to the middle, and then turns of floss just slightly onto that last turn of the stem. Just spread the floss onto it. But don't flatten it. You don't want it to sit on top of the the, the fibres. You get to this point, you come across your thread. Two or three ties will, will tie it in. Now I'm just going to wax my thread. And then wind my rib up. First one, straight. And then you're looking for about three turns up. Come underneath. Catch in. Now see this point, just imagine that being a small head. You're going to tie in a hackle. And then remove the excess tinsel. Keep that for the second part of the body. The hackle. Just going to use a Chinese cock hackle dyed yellow. This is like a buttercup yellow. It's quite strong. Now, length really is up to yourself. Uh, some people like a long hackle, some like it short. So um, I'm just going to pick a nice part of the hackle. Now, turns is entirely up to the quality. It's up to the, the quality of the hackle. If it's good, thick fibre, then you only need to do a couple of turns or a turn even. But if it's quite fine, you need to do two or three. Now, tie it in by the tip, folded it back. And then basically keep the thread tight, and then you can break that away, or cut it if you don't. If you're not comfortable doing that, just cut it away. Then I'm just going to fold the hackle, and then do one turn in front of the other. Just see how it's sitting. Just take your time. Now, when you're folding the hackle back, fold it when it's your fingers are on the top, not underneath. Because then there's the, the chances are if you do it underneath, the more likely that you'll jag your fingers. And then 90 degree bend into the stem. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but I've taken the thread turns in between the hackle fibres. I've drawn them back so that I can get the thread turns in to the stem. It's caused a lot of bulk if you, if you tie in some of these fibres. And then just work your thread up. Tidy up the area, the full length of the second part of the body. Tiny bit of wax. Just keep going forward at this point when you're tying in this hackle. And then again, I'm just going to catch in my, my rib, silver rib, old, old silver tinsel. Wind it back down. Right up against the, the hackle, but not onto it. Do you see how it's sitting? That looks fine. And then you're looking for black floss, and uh, just use the same. You can see you can use your rayon floss, or you could use whatever you have. Again, just make sure it's right up again towards the hackle. Work your way down. Again, a wee bit of wax on at this point, and then form a second part of your body. Take your time, give yourself plenty of space. Stop it early if you want, if you feel you need to stop it early. Better them in too close to the eye. Trim away the waste. Always keeping the thread tight. I always hold on to the bobbin so the thread is always tight. Looking three turns up. And then catch it underneath. Yeah, nice and tight. A couple of wipes with the, the wax and trim away. Now I'm just going to tidy up the head area and come back down. 
This is a you can use a Chinese or an Indian cock neck. And this is a light or a medium red, natural red. Hackle fibre length, much the same length as the, the yellow hackle. Just going to tie it in. Just check the length, that's fine. Then we again, I'm going to tie this in by the tip. Now, just going to catch it on the side with the front of the, the hackle facing myself. Thread turns down, thread turns back up to where the point you want the hackle to start. Keep the thread tight, break that off. Now, just a wee wipe of the wax again, bring the thread down a bit. And then fold in the hackle. Now, it's very lightly I'm doing this, and when I fold the hackle back, I fold it so my fingers are on top of the shank. Don't bring your fingers underneath, because what will happen, you'll just obviously jag them or get them caught. So keep your fingers on the top, and as you wind, take the turn round, use your finger and thumb to pinch and hold, and get enough turns in there. Now again, the number of turns is determined on how good the feather is. So we check and see how it's like. You don't need a huge amount of fibre here. Now I'm just going to round the once more, I think. Just a wee check. Just drawing the fibres back as you go. And once you're happy, just put that 90 degree bend into the stem. Now what I'm doing there is wiggling the thread turns through the, the fibres, or allowing the fibres to come by. So there's a space there for the thread turns to get into the stem. You don't want to catch these excess fibres. I mean, you can draw them back. Because these are what causes a lot of problems at the head and uh, bulk up. Now once you're happy, there's enough turns to hold it, you can trim away the excess. Now this fly would be good without jungle cock as much with. So it's certainly worth it. If you don't have any jungle cock, don't put it on. Now I'm going to show you in one Megan's fly that basically a single jungle cock eye. Many years ago, jungle cock, and it still is, really expensive. Now, a lot of the big guys you don't use, and you can, the, the, a bit, you don't get used to them unless you're tying a really big fly. But in this style, you can. In Ireland, they'll quite happily put a single jungle cock eye on, on top of the, the hook. And as you can see, like, I've got another reason, I'll show you something here. In this fly, what I've done is I've the jungle cock's on first and then the hackle's in front. But in Megan's fly, she's put the hackle on, like just like I have here, and then put the jungle cock on top. So I'm tying them both different styles to try them out. I know the fly will work. I just I'd want to try them in different different styles. And that, as I say, is the fun of tying your own flies, that you can do that. Now, as I say, the big jungle cock eyes don't get used up. These big ones at the top, they don't have to be perfect. I mean, like they could be easily, they could be split. Now I've got one eye here. There we are. See the big, it's a large jungle cock eye. Now in Megan's fly, the tip of the jungle cock finishes at the, the back of the, the fly, just at the end of the tag here. So what I'm going to do is then just remove the fibres either side. And now you could tie that straight on. Get the length. Tie it straight on like that, and then trim away the waist. But what I'm going to do here, I'm going to tie it forward and pull it back because it's it's neater. It actually looks much neater. So what I'm going to do is I've got an idea of where I'm going to tie it in. Trim away the excess. Come in, tie it on the top. Now when you show you this, my fingers are in the way to put this point. Now I'm just going to check the length. Double check. The length is fine. Now, if you can see in there, I've just got it forward. Now, it's important that you put just a slightly, couple of wipes of the wax on the thread. Just wind down. Say, so fold this back. Bring the thread to the front and up and over the jungle cock. Nice and tight. Now, once you've got your thread turns up out up towards the jungle cock, what I like to do is. Basically, put my finger in the jungle cock and then slide it towards the eye. And what that does, it, okay, it folds it down in here, it lowers it a wee bit. So, just take your time. And then, what you can do is just, it's a 
fold the, what I like to do is fold jungle cut, just so that you can see either side. And then, now, I'm going to change the thread colour, uh, the colour of the head, and simply, all I'm going to do is wind the thread. I'll change the thread colour by winding black over the red. You could use black varnish, just as Megan done, but I'm just going to use the, this way, just come over the top. This just darkens the head down. Nice and tight. And then trim away. So you don't really need to do this, but uh, for speed that you could find it's one of the easiest ways and the quickest. There we are. And then we can wet finish. Just bring my thread down. Now at this point what I'm doing is I'm tidying the head up here, area up as well. It's a wind. Nice and tight. And you see now the jungle crop, you can see it. This look like you can't, but see in the side that there this definitely shows up. But I really want to show you as well the, the, the fly that Megan tied. It's a lovely pattern. And then looking for a coat of varnish to finish the job. Let's get some varnish. All the way around. Just don't touch the fly, or the material, sorry. Now, to speed this process up, what I normally do, what I like to do anyway, is uh, super glue on first, and then the varnish, and then it's done in no time. But you can see it's it's a lovely part, and it's unusual having the single jungle cock. It's not unusual in certain places, but it's certainly unusual to see. So, let's show you the original. This is Megan's fly here, and uh, nicely tied, beautifully tied, and a rare privilege to hold one. So anyway, I hope you liked the Megan Boyd's shrimp fly.